Hello and welcome to this rapid review of the bony pelvis. We're going to name all the major landmarks you need to know. We're going to start off with this lateral view of the right pelvic bone. Let's start off with the major bones. We've got the ilium, which is related to the gluteal region posteriorly and is the most superior. We have the ischium, which consists of a large body and a ramus, which connects to the pubis. The pubis is its own bone and has a body and two large rami. We can now move on and name the major landmarks here. We've got the anterior superior iliac spine, which thickens posteriorly to form the iliac crest. The anterior superior iliac spine is important for the attachment of the inguinal ligament, as well as some muscles as well. Moving inferiorly from that, we have the anterior inferior iliac spine, which is important for the attachment of the rectus femoris muscle. Moving inferiorly once more, we have the pubic tubercle, this is the distal attachment site of the inguinal ligament. Now we can name the hole in the middle of the bone, the obturator foramen, filled by a membrane known as the obturator membrane and transmits the obturator nerve and the obturator vessels. Moving posteriorly, a really important landmark, the ischial tuberosity, very prominent feature, important site for the attachment of the posterior lower limb muscles, the hamstring group. A projection on the posterior surface known as the ischial spine creates two depressions above and below. We've got the lesser sciatic notch below, not labelled here, and the greater sciatic notch above. These notches are turned into foramen by two ligaments, eventually the sacrospinous ligament and the sacrotuberous ligament. The centrepiece here is a depression known as the acetabulum. This is the articular socket where the head of the femur would articulate to create the hip joint. It is comprised of all three of the bones of the pelvis, the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis. Let's now take a look at a medial view where we can see some of the same structures again. We can see the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic crest. We mentioned the inguinal ligament, but also we have attachment here of the sartorius muscle. This is also an important area for surface anatomy and an important landmark for surface anatomy. The anterior inferior iliac spine is an attachment for the iliofemoral ligament. We can see the linear terminalis here, a ridge which forms the pelvic brim and separates the true and false pelvis. We can see the pubic tubercle once more and on this one we can also see the anterior surface of the pubic symphysis which is a midline cartilaginous joint. The obturator foramen can be seen again filled by muscle, the obturator internus and externus. We see the ischial tuberosity, which is important for where weight is placed when we're sitting. We can see the lesser sciatic notch and the greater sciatic notch once more with the ischial spine in the center. So that completes our medial and lateral views. Now let's look at the pelvic bone together with the sacrum in an anterior view. So in this view, we can see how the two pelvic bones are joined with the sacrum. We see the S1 body. We see the important sacroiliac joint, which is important for transmitting forces from the lower limb to the vertebral column. A lot of these structures we can whiz through because we've seen before the anterior superior iliac spine. We see again the ischial spine projecting into the pelvic cavity. The obturator foramen we see once more and the pubic symphysis, a secondary midline cartilaginous joint. The pubic tubercle we see once again, we can see the two in close proximity, less left and right. The ischial pubic ramus we can now see, and we can also see the superior pubic ramus. To complete this diagram, we need to mention the acetabulum, which we can see laterally on this particular view, an anterior view. And But we can also name the ala of the sacrum, which is a wing-like projection, which forms the sacroiliac joint, and also a concave depression known as the wing of the ilium. We can see the greater sciatic notch and the lesser sciatic notch again and we can also now have a look at the iliac crest which up until this point hasn't been labelled but I have talked about it. So now we can talk about the pelvic inlet which is all three of the pelvic bones forming the arcuate line, the pectineal line and the pubic crest forming the linear terminalis and this is the pelvic brim separating the true and false pelvis.